With more and more entry-level jobs in bioinformatics and genomic data science coming onto the job market in 2022 right now, I'm here to tell you why you can get these entry-level jobs, and I mean genuinely entry-level, not PhD, 10 billion years of Python experience and a painting in the loom. <laughs> Stay tuned if you want to find out why I think it's better to learn on the job and get one of these junior entry-level roles rather than going to grad school. My name's Georgia, this is Genomics with Georgia, and I'm a self-taught data scientist living and working in Cambridge in the UK. This channel is all about how you could go from a wet lab biologist, teach yourself how to code and land a job in genomic data science. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Georgia and I'm a genomic data scientist. I am currently a senior data scientist and two years ago, I started out as a junior. I have insane news and you should call me. So fresh out of my undergrad, no graduate degree, and I spent the last two years essentially learning on the job. And I now work with people at the same level who have graduate degrees. So joining me in the beautiful uh, UBC campus today, where I'm gonna tell you guys my personal opinion about why it's better to learn the skills to become a genomic data scientist or bioinformatician on the job rather than going to grad school. I mean, <laughs> this is my personal, it's windy today. This is my personal opinion about why it's better to get them through employment. So if you wanna stick around and learn why it's better, then stay tuned on this next episode of Genomics with Georgia. It's now 2022 and I swear to God, there are so many more junior positions in bioinformatics, data science, genomic data science. There are so many more junior positions than there used to be even like two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And that's because the industry is changing. So people are realizing that there are other ways to build these skill sets to do this job that don't involve getting a graduate degree. And if you can come into a company, train up on the job, you can learn the specific skills needed to do the job. So there are so many more jobs in this sector now, there are so many more junior positions because people need computational geneticists. Let's talk through why it's more beneficial for you to get these entry-level junior jobs as opposed to waiting, you know, two, three, five, six years, getting a graduate degree. So the first perk about learning on the job as opposed to going to get your master's or your PhD is the fact that you get workplace benefits, right? So obviously if you've spent your whole life in academia studying and going through the motions of, you know, undergrad, postgrad, professor, la di la di la da, you don't quite realize how, how many perks you get actually having a job. First things first, if you have a job, you have a salary, it's not a stipend, which means that you're paying tax. If you start contributing to the tax system, that's just really good for your financials moving forward. One of the really important workplace perks, why well, I say perks, like the benefit is when you have a salary as opposed to a stipend, your employer is going to contribute to your pension. You start contributing to your pension earlier. And I know when we're younger, we don't really think about that being an important point, but it really is. It's like a savings fund that your employer is then matching and you're just gonna get access to that later. And if you're having a side still studying, you're not doing that. So you're kind of behind in terms of contributing to your pension. And then second of all, I can't speak for every workplace, but a lot of workplaces, and sometimes they do apply to like graduate students. So like, don't shout at me here, <laughs> but you can have some workplaces have really cool schemes, things like salary sacrifice. So your employer can take a segment of your salary before it's taxed, and then you sacrifice that. And you can use that for things like tech schemes or getting electric vehicles or other random salary sacrifice schemes that exist. Whereas if you have a stipend, you can't get those benefits Benefits of salary sacrifice is you're not paying tax anyway. So salary sacrifice schemes are something you obviously only get with a salary. And then another thing, and again, I don't know if this is applicable to some grad programs, but obviously masters it isn't gonna be. You can get things like private healthcare until you get sick or you need a specialist healthcare. You don't really think about that as being an important thing that you'd want this early on in your life. However, private healthcare is like an amazing benefit. It's usually so expensive and a lot of work schemes will give you discounts. Um, and again, like salary sacrifice, paying for things prior to getting taxed. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a really good thing to think about the health when you are entering into the beginning of your career. So salary versus stipend. It also means that if you wanna go and do something like buy a house, if you've been good with savings, then people are gonna look at your salary for your more Mortgage. Hey, here's the thing. Like if you've got a stipend, it's not quite the same. Same goes for renting, right? Like if you want to rent somewhere, 
the landlord or estate agents are going to look at your income and sometimes people don't quite understand fixed term stipend whereas if you're in a job you're on a fixed term or maybe full-time contract of a annual salary and that's just so much easier for estate agents and letting agents to be able to understand so it's kind of these boring adult things that you get in a job that are kind of workplace perks that you might not necessarily get doing a graduate degree. My camera just fell over, so the angle is different, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I will caveat though, if you're not a student anymore, then <laughs> RIP student discounts. <laughs> I miss student discounts so much. And obviously, when you have a salary, you're probably gonna be paying back your student loan at this point. I mean, in the UK, we have like a threshold you have to be earning, and then you start paying it back. Student loans in the UK are a graduate tax, so I'm happy to pay that, it's a graduate tax, it's not a real debt. Ah, it annoys me so much. <laughs> My next benefit of learning on the job uh, compared to getting a education in like graduate studies is the fact that you gain like the relevant skill set for the workplace. So just a caveat, um, I should probably said this at the beginning, um, but however, a lot of these entry level jobs in like genomic data science and bioinformatics, these are kind of slightly off the academic path. What you're doing isn't your own siloed project. You're not gonna be, ah, wasp. <laughs> you're not gonna be like writing your own like thesis all the time. That's not what these jobs are. These jobs are about contributing to greater projects because you're a genomics operational practitioner your skills are going to be utilized by multiple people it's not you have a specific project that you then keep moving forward with you kind of dabble in lots of things so you get to like develop the skills that are relevant to the workplace not the academic career path and not a lot of people after grad school continue in the academic path anyway a lot of people then go into workplace environments where you're working in a team so the kind of skills that you develop is when you go into the workplace, you're not working on your own siloed project. You work in a multidisciplinary team full of people with all sorts of different skill sets, backgrounds, abilities, experiences, and you get to develop those really important soft skills where you, you listen to people, you ask them questions, you talk, you learn to communicate. And being granted, I'm still learning workplace hierarchy, politics, communication. Not very good at that. But you get to learn how to interact in a workplace as opposed to in your own kind of siloed project where it's all just about you. And then also the technical side. If you're working in a like graduate project, you're just going to get the skills that are going to help you do your own specific thing. Whereas if you're in a workplace, the technical skills that you start to learn are going to be the things that are relevant to the workplace. So for example, you might use Git for your own version control if you like want to keep track of your own code, if you're doing your own project. But the thing is, if you then work in a team in a job, then you're going to learn collaborative version control. Other people, and I learned this the hard way, other people have so much better practices about how to document their code, how to format their files, like just etiquette of using GitLab. I've learned so much from working in a team where we're all committing to GitLab rather than me just using Git on my own for version control. You can talk to all of these people that are using this really important version control technology that if you're in a kind of different environment in academia, you're not necessarily concerned about collaborating on a project, like an ongoing project with multiple different like people and stakeholders. Personal and technical development is more relatable to the job market as opposed to the academic career path. And like I said, most people won't end up doing the academic career path anyway. So caveat to this one is the fact that when you're in academia, grad school, whatever, you're surrounded by lots of peers. Yeah, so you can you can relate to those peers and you're all in the same position. Whereas if you come in at a junior level into a job, then you're the most junior person and there won't be that many people that you can relate to about being in that environment. So even though you're in this better, should I say better? <laughs> even though you're in this kind of multifunctional, multidisciplinary environment, it can feel slightly isolating when everyone around you appears to be so much better than you. Well, they are better than you because you're freaking junior. Last but not least, if you're getting these junior entry level roles, then you've already got your foot in the door, right? Like you're not 
chilling out in grad well, no one chills out in grad school but you're not you're not like chilling out in grad school thinking oh i you know i, I don't want to work in academia when i graduate and i want to go get a job with a salary and where do i go who do i talk to if you get the entry level role you start building your professional network so much sooner and like i said it's not even just about building your network within genomic data science like you start building your network in terms of that whole end-to-end -end product development so you might even find that you don't want to do this right and like then you've already started to make connections in all sorts of other areas related to genomics a lot of people in the workplace will have worked to other companies they might be moving on to other companies as well so your, your network of the job market is just going to grow so much quicker than if you're in this academic bubble getting your skills and another thing about having your foot in the door is you can see a clear route of progression so you don't have this you know doomsday day of oh god i'm gonna graduate and what on earth do i do now like what do i do after i graduate am i gonna have enough money to pay my rent whereas if you've got your foot in the door you're in you're at the you're at the very bottom but you are on the ladder and the only way is up like don't look down the only way is up from getting in at the bottom it just means that you've got so much more security. You've got a route of progression. You know, you can you can look at those people in the more senior positions, and you can you can look at their skill set, and then you can look at the kind of type of work that they're doing, the the kind of products that they're delivering, what kind of stakeholders do they liaise with, how much leadership do they have. You can see these people, you can interact with them, and you can understand how to get yourself from entry level to senior level because they're all around you and you can talk to them and communication is the most important thing for developing your career so yes your foot's in the door you're already in i just feel so much safer like being in a job rather than like waiting in terms of job security too so obviously a lot of jobs in industry and like genomics products development are either like fixed term contracts or they can be full-time contracts and that's unheard of in academia right everyone's on these temp contracts their job's gonna end in a year, they already have to start looking, like your foot's always out of the door when you're on these temporary contracts. Whereas if you get these full-time contracts, you've got job security, you've most likely got a better salary than you would with the stipend, even though like it's taxed. A lot of the time, these junior level positions, the salary is like so much bigger than you ever thought. Just to give you an idea of, there are like these entry level jobs paying you more than doing grad school or whatever so they pay you more you can see the career progression and then you can just progress to the level of your peers that spent those few years in school so it's basically a way of like oh would i rather have job security uh sit at the bottom of a career ladder already be in the environment i want to work in and then in two years time get this senior job or would i rather be a broke student have no job security have that like scramble to find a job if you've got your foot in the door your foot's in the door and it's just so important to start building these professional connections as early as you can in order to advance your network because your network are the people that are going to vouch for you they're going to give you opportunities and that's where it's worth investing your time that's it for today so hopefully i have convinced you why it could be beneficial for you to instead of going on those application websites, head on over to LinkedIn, to Indeed, wherever you go to find your jobs and keep searching junior, entry level, bioinformatician, data scientist, because I promise you it's 2022, the landscape is changing and these roles are out there. The whole sector is finally understanding that you don't need to go to grad school to get the technical skill set to work in genomic data science. So. I've been Georgia, this is Genomics with Georgia. If you've liked today's content, you know what to do. <laughs> Give me a like, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you again on another instalment of Genomics. I don't know why I'm doing the sunniest thing at the moment. <laughs> on Genomics with Georgia.